What is with, what is with these guys? Always with these guys. I'm plucking it. I'm plucking it. Welcome back to the Helpful Home. I'm Sunday Dawn, and today I am going to do a little bit of a tips and tricks video, I guess you could call it. Um, my eating content doesn't do as well as my home com content, and I'm I'm pretty aware of it, but I um, kind of decided I don't care because it's the content I need, and the people that watch my gluten-free, clean eating, dairy-free, all the freeze, low histamine content, um, there's a little something for everybody in there, um, I find that they really appreciate the content and they sort of need it in their lives. And I've been them. I have now been, let's see, my daughter was, I think she was 11 and she's 25. So it's been 14 years of very strictly gluten-free, probably nearly the same, 13 years of dairy-free and egg-free for probably close to a decade. So we were definitely gluten-free when it wasn't cool. And honestly, it, if you have celiac disease, you know what I'm about to say. It was actually easier then because everybody didn't think they knew everything about it because Joe Blow and their cousin um, has like a... Um, I so don't want to offend the gluten intolerant people. It's just a different beast to be gluten intolerant or to have celiac disease. So it makes people a little less careful now. I find when you say like, do you have something gluten free? People are like, oh yeah, we know all about it. And like, that's a different, that's a different scenario. Um, but I, I do feel like we've done a lot of years. Uh, I mean, I mean, how many holidays is that? 14 years worth of holidays where we've been navigating gluten-free um, and dairy-free and some other things, but specifically I'll probably talk about gluten-free. I don't know, maybe I'll say like dietary restrictions, eating with dietary restrictions at the holiday, both eating out and eating at like a large family gathering can be pretty difficult. Um, they have their own difficulties. Um, and, you know, there's different ways to navigate them both. Having done both, I thought it might be a good time to sit down and maybe give a few tips and tricks of how we have survived very strictly gluten-free or being celiac at the holidays. Again, it probably applies to most of the allergies because, to be quite honest, you know, the number one tip I have is bring a little bit of everything. And usually people are not offended by this. It is easier now that both of my daughters are grown so I can split the little bit of everything with two other adult women. So when we come and have a little bit of everything, it doesn't look like I'm trying to be a show off. But listen, if you're trying to feed your daughters and they're very strictly any sort of allergen free or celiac, uh, you really need to bring a little bit of everything just even to make them be able to fill their plate and feel like they have a normal looking plate because a lot of being gluten-free is sort of about the uncomfortableness. I have less trouble with that, but I don't really have as much trouble being uncomfortable in social situations as my daughters or husband anyway. Like that's just a personality trait. So, but I have years of experience dealing with people who are a little uncomfortable and don't want to make other people uncomfortable and don't want to offend people. And that is honestly, honestly one of the hardest things is when somebody comes and says like, I made this so you can eat it. And you have somebody like my oldest daughter and she just cannot eat that and will not eat that. And so we do a lot of, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And then just skipping past that in the line, you know, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but really if you have the type of allergy where you can't, you can't risk it. It'll, it'll be like the ruin of your whole holiday season. Um, and specifically your night. Um, yeah. If you don't want to live on the bathroom floor and be vomiting for hours, um, yeah, you kind of just don't want to take the risk. So my number one tip is bring a little bit of everything. If you're going to a holiday dinner or a holiday potluck, I either, it really sort of is the same. The difference, no, I'm not even going to say that's a difference. I don't even really think there's a difference as far as in both cases, depending on who you're dealing with. 
I label. Um, and if you're dealing with someone who is uncomfortable with labels, just stick a toothpick in all the items that your family can eat because people aren't gonna pull the toothpick out. They'll just think that there's a toothpick in it for some reason. Um, and then it very quickly identifies something as you can eat all the stuff with the toothpicks and you don't have to have a big sign. But especially with like my husband's side of the family, nobody minds signs. And so I bring little chalk board. In fact, I should find a few labels and drop them in the description box. I'll try to do that. But um, you just go on Amazon and you Google chalkboard labels or like wooden chalkboard. I think I think the ones I have might be like seating cards, like seating placards for seating when you sit down at your table and you write who sits where. And I just put GF, DF, EF, SF, whatever, gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, soy-free, whatever free it is. I just chalk it right onto my labels and I pop those in front of every thing my family can eat. And I also often say like, we can eat it, but it's for everyone because I don't want people to feel like they can't eat the food. I've brought a lot of food. You can eat it. Don't double dip, which your family needs to be aware of. Um, so really be sure you've had a talk with mostly the people in your family that they understand how serious it is. I would say probably most families do already know when they have a person who's ill in their family, but um, try to include everybody and try to make sure my family's covered. Now for my Madeline, if you have a very strict case of any allergy or specifically in our family, celiac, I always make her a plate before I've ever even brought the food to the counter. I make her a full plate too, if we're going to be there to have another round two later in the evening. Um, and I cover them with foil and I pop them in the fridge and I just, sometimes I'll put an M on them, but I just pop them in there and then there's no worries. If we're watching and people are double dipping or people are dribbling things on top of it, she just, nope, I'm getting my plate right out of the fridge, but I put it together. It looks just like a normal plate everybody has. It doesn't have everything on it because we can't obviously eat the things that everyone there brought, but I always make sure there's a protein. I always make sure there's a carbohydrate or like a starch. I always make sure there's a vegetable. I always make sure there's a bread and I always make sure there's dessert. We always bring all five. Um, I try to do that the easiest way I can. My protein will be something that can be in the crock pot all night or in the instant pot in the morning so that that's like off my brain. Potatoes can generally be done the night before and reheated. Your vegetable, you probably want to do fresh. Your bread, you probably want to do fresh, but um, you can have at least the vegetable prepped and your dessert you can do the night before. So I make sure that I cover my bases now that my girls are grown. My daughter usually brings the starch. My youngest does an amazing gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, all the frees, um, potato casserole, sort of a twice-baked potato casserole. And again, the whole family loves it and wants to eat it and it gets eaten all gone. The men love it and they don't care or think about the fact that it's full of all the frees. Um, and that is part of why I make plates. I make sure I make plates so Madeline doesn't starve later in the day when all those things are gone. Um, our Brussels sprouts with bacon and onion is usually what I do for a veggie and it, all of, including my nephews, they all love the Brussels sprouts with bacon. And so again, I make sure Madeline is fed before anybody starts eating. Um, my, my tip I would say for someone who's really uncomfortable, like my husband. He just doesn't want to put anybody out and he also just doesn't like to draw any attention. And my biggest tip is you just scope out the room and then go offer him a cup of coffee and quietly tell him everything he can have. My husband will eat things his mom makes that are gluten-free and they are gluten-free. She just doesn't have quite all of the details sometimes enough that Madeline will be nervous. She has other issues and it's hard for people to keep up with your other issues. But um, yeah, I have her walk me through what he can eat. Other people will say, oh, I brought a gluten-free muffins. I brought a gluten-free dessert. My husband will eat those. They don't seem to bother him. He does eat gluten-free. And so if they're gluten-free, he'll eat them and he's not as worried about all the extra things. So yeah, like old standby trick, go find the person 
after you've gotten there and gotten the lay of the land and quietly go offer your man a cup of coffee, which nobody thinks is weird. In fact, probably people think it's nice. And then I just say, you can have the small pan of potatoes on the right. You can have the thing of soup that's in the crock pot, not the one that's on the stove. You can have the muffins in the pink wrapper, but not the muffins with no wrapper. I give him a little rundown so he's not going in blind. Um, and also he doesn't have to say, hey, honey, what can I have? Well, he's in like a buffet line with all of his brothers. Again, everybody's perfectly lovely about it, but it's really just knowing how to navigate the people in your family and meet their needs, both socially, emotionally, and dietarily. Um, I would say a big, I eat the most strictly of everyone in my family. Oddly, you would think Madeline does, but at this point I'm having some histamine issues, which is lots of swelling and hives and things I just don't want to deal with at all. <laughs> So um, that eliminates a lot of foods that are just high in histamine. It's not just shellfish that are high in histamine, although I've always had a problem with shellfish, which was probably telling of what was to come. Um, so I eat my protein and I eat the batch of vegetables I made for myself that don't have the onions and bacon in them. And my daughter actually does treat me and kind of make well, Madeline and I, even like a separate special little batch of her potatoes so that we know we can have that. But I am the least nervous about people knowing or just caring what anybody thinks about what I eat. I will say dessert's really hard. It's just not something I can really have at this point. And so honestly, coffee chat, we're having a little Javi coffee chat. But seriously, it was not hard to work them into this video because... Um, I just got back from Hawaii and I found that Javi would have been, I didn't have it with me yet, and it would have been a great addition to a vacation for this reason. If you want to watch my gluten-free and Maui video, I'll put it in the description box below. But um, for the same reason that I'm going to bring it with me to my Christmas potlucks, Christmas dinners, because I only drink decaf. I don't drink a lot of it. Um, it's sort of a treat. And with the Javi, I'm able to drop how many drops of coffee concentrate I want in there without it being a strong cup of coffee or, or um, make a cup of chicory and just drop a couple drops of coffee in there for flavor. Or even if I just want a decaf, when everybody stops to have dessert and it's like, everybody's cutting up dessert, it's on the counter, a coffee does feel like a treat and does feel like a dessert to me. And then it doesn't make me say like, is there decaf? Do you have decaf? Do you have this? I just, I've got it. It's easy. It's a small little bottle. It's nondescript. Why don't I have it in my hand right now? I don't know. At the end, um, I will again go ahead and um, show you my Javi and tell you a little bit more about it. Although if you've been here, you, um, uh, too much talking. If you've been here, then you have seen some of my Javi content, but I really am really happy with their product and their practices and their versatility and their prices. Half the price of a K-cup, you're literally saving money by making Javi coffees. Half the price, like one tenth of the amount of time to make it. Um, it's literally probably one tenth of the price of a coffee shop coffee, but literally half the price of a K-cup better, tastes fresher to me. Um, you can make an iced coffee in 30 seconds, just adding it to ice and milk. So that's something really easy to do at like a family potluck when you're wanting to have a treat and feel normal, carry around your cup of coffee and doctor it up with the stuff that you can have. And then you just kind of feel included both. Like, like I said, I'm not as worried about what people think about if I look included, but for myself to help you not have those really like oh, I can't eat everything like everybody else can, to not to not start that thing, which I don't really have much in normal life. But at the holidays, you can feel it starting a little bit. And um, like I said, for my babies, I just cover them. I just cover it. They're adults now, so they do participate. But for myself, I just eat the way I eat, and I bring myself my little coffee, and I have a little treat, and it makes me just feel where I can shut my mind of comparing just, it makes me not compare. I've got a cup of coffee just like everybody else. You know, I might be eating grapes for my dessert and I'm not having the chocolate cake, but um, 
yeah, it's sort of a, the coffee brings people together. I mean, has it not been forever that people sat around and drank a cup of coffee together? So I really do appreciate it. And like when we go to Disney next, when I go on my next vacation, we're actually going up to a, um, a lodge in the mountains for the snow for my husband's birthday here in like a week and a half. I'm going to bring my Javi because then I feel like I have a little bit of a treat and I have complete control over the ingredients, the quality of the product, and even just how much I use depending on how I'm feeling that day, how much decaf I'm feeling up to trying. So it does give me, it gives me a lot of control over my cup of coffee, which is something you don't always have in a hotel or an Airbnb. You kind of have what you have. And also, like I said about Hawaii, like my husband's making a pot of regular. I don't want to have to dump his out and make myself a cup of decaf when I can just add two teaspoons of my Javi to a hot cup of water out of the microwave. So it really does help that way. As far as tips and tricks for eating out gluten-free or celiac or with allergens at the holiday, and I will even say my Madeline, very strict, doesn't love to do a restaurant, only does it when circumstances arise that she really feels like for social reasons or family reasons, she needs to participate in an event. Um, and I'll just tell you the hardest that ever was, was while she was a teenager. So I will tell you how we navigated that because that's the hardest it would ever be. And she would text me while she was out and say, we just got out of the movie. They want to go to Stanford's go. And I would call Stanford's and they would answer. And I would say, hello, my daughter has a medical, medically restricted diet. Those are kind of your like magic words to where they're they're aware of what you're talking about. And I need to speak to the chef that will be pre preparing my daughter's food. Or do you have an allergen chef? Often they have an allergen chef, but regardless, I've never had a chef not say, oh yes, I'll take that call. And every time at every restaurant I've ever called, I have said, my daughter is coming to you with a group of teenage kids. She has celiac disease and is extremely sensitive and doesn't usually eat out for this reason. So they're aware, not like, why are you sending your daughter to my restaurant then? And I say, these are her extreme dietary needs. Can you make anything? It won't be on the menu. They almost always say like, we have some fresh fish or some fresh chicken. I've got some vegetables. I've got, I can poach a piece of fish and kind of give me the rundown. I can pan fry some potatoes instead of deep fry. I've never had them not accommodate me. And I've always had them say, even before I ask, I will be the only one to touch her plate. And that is really honestly what I, what I would have to ask is, can no one else touch her plate but you? And the big joke with my daughter and all her teenage friends was they would say, Madeline is a VIP everywhere we go because they walk into Stanford's, Stanford's or Olive Garden or anywhere she would go and they would sit down with, you know, I would say she's coming with a big group of teenagers or if she's coming with the family, she's coming with 13 people with her husband's family or whatever it would be. And the, the waitress would say like, okay, I'll take all your orders. And then literally they will be like, is Madeline here with you? And Madeline will say, that's me. And they say, we've already got you taken care of. It's all been taken care of. And so everybody laughs like Madeline's the VIP. When we get to restaurants, they're already preparing her food and it's all taken care of and a chef brings it out. So again, like that would make my husband probably super uncomfortable. Um, it would probably make my youngest pretty uncomfortable too. And I don't think Madeline loves it, but she's like me. And we are very fond of saying like now, if I go in a restaurant, I don't call ahead for myself, but I literally say when they come to take my order, I am going to be really high maintenance, but I'm going to be the nicest high maintenance person you've ever met. And they kind of laugh and it breaks the ice and it lets them know that, you know, you're about to be a little bit difficult because of your dietary restrictions. And I find that ice breaking to be like, that's a big tip to break the ice. Let them know, you know, you're asking a lot of them. Um, and then ask it and be specific. And if you, for fear of something doesn't look right, mention it. My daughter ate something that was supposed to be gluten-free that I had prearranged. She questioned it as she was chewing it. 
and she was too embarrassed to say anything and they went to a movie after and she had to throw up in her popcorn bucket. Sorry, Madeline, if you don't want to watch this video and have me talk about that, then you're gonna have to turn it off. <laughs> but you know, we share these experiences to help other people to say, uh, by the way, she was with her fiance at the time who is now her husband and he was lovely and he helped her out and he helped her get that taken care of and he brought her home and he I really think he wished they were already married because he had a really hard time leaving her because she's really sick and we spent the night sleeping on the bathroom floor. I just brought in pillows because it was going to be a long night and we slept under the good blanket, our family's favorite blanket, on the bathroom floor so she could just be sick all night. And like I said, it's not her fault by any means. Eating out is risky. But as she was eating it, she said her mind thought, I don't think these are gluten-free noodles, even though they specifically told me they were. So trust your gut. Another big tip, trust your gut and don't risk it. And I would say don't worry about what anybody else thinks, but half of my family does care what other people think, and that's okay, and that's human. So in that case, as I said before, the tips and tricks are know the lay of the land when you get there subtly let your family know what it is they can eat and the toothpick trick goes a long way in that also i often bring my chalkboard labels they say what everything is we can have i set them in front of all of our meals but if there's food there that i know that the other memories like my youngest or my husband can eat everyone has toothpicks or bring toothpicks and i could pop toothpicks in the things that i didn't make that my husband or daughter can have just something to let them know without being a big shining red banner so I guess my number one tips are come prepared, bring a little bit of everything. And if you have very sensitive people, fix them a plate before you ever get going, cover it in foil and put it away. Often at the holidays, I have slid it on the top of people's fridges where nobody can see it because in the fridge it might get mussed around. So if she's gonna eat it right away. I just slide it under the cabinet on top of the fridge on the top. And when everybody's going through the line, you pop it down for them and toss it in the microwave. So um, yeah, my, my tips and tricks for going out are call ahead if it's a really big deal and they will almost always accommodate you. I've never had anyone not accommodate me happily and be excited to help out my family. I've, I've had one bad experience and it wasn't that. It was, it was um, management. I had a bad management experience at the beach once. But other than that, I haven't had any issues with like the actual chefs or people that are helping, they want to know how they can help and they want you to get to eat out and ex enjoy your experience and come back. And um, yeah, like I said, my other tip or trick is bring yourself a goodie that makes you feel included and, you know, segue to my Javi coffee, but sincerely, it really is kind of taking your power back and being able to um, fill a need before it really bubbles over and you're really feeling um, resentment that everyone else is having coffee and everyone else is having cake and everyone else bring your own little treat whatever comforts you that you know that you can have something that you like that tastes good that occupies your hands to where you're you're uh, you're not wishing you were cutting and <laughs> and eating dessert with everyone else so um, yeah I guess those are mostly my tips and tricks I mean I could go into detail about tips and tricks with like the specific allergens, but that's gonna be more food content. So if somebody wants more food content, if you want some gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free at the holidays recipes, let me know. I would be happy to throw up Claire's potato recipe. Um, I've, I've asked her if she would share that. Um, I mean, yeah, anybody who wants food content recipe-wise for gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, soy-free. I do sugar-free and histamine-free as well. But yeah, we have we have food content we could come to you with. My youngest also, she's our chef in the family. She made a from-scratch, gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, soy-free um, focaccia bread. And she brought it to her friend's holiday gathering this year. And one of her friends just got back from Italy. And it was, bread is hard gluten-free. And the focaccia bread was just perfect and her friend said I just got back from Italy and this is as good as any focaccia bread I had on my trip. So yeah, we have some good recipes. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. I can give you some of those tidbits. In the meantime, um, yeah, I will um, 
show my little Javi on the way out with um, with a little bit more information about that. And the link to the Javi and the coupon code will be down below in the description box. As I said, you're saving money, you're saving time, and it's really delicious. When you can really appreciate someone's product and practices, I'm a very comfortable um, promoting it because it has been a lifesaver for me in several situations, especially on this journey of moving back into a little bit of coffee. It really does give you the control back. So yeah, we'll, we'll exit on a little Javi blurb and let me know if you want more food content because um, I've always got recipes and suggestions and food organization ideas. And uh, I know a lot of you really appreciate that. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for walking, wa watching. Thanks for being here for like my, um, my weird coffee chat. Coffee chat with Sunday Dawn. <laughs> Gluten free, all the freeze. And uh, yeah, I will see you Tuesday for Tiny Tidy Tuesday. We have uh, a new friend, Vera. And uh, yeah, we have a couple new friends joining for Tiny Tidy Tuesday. So be there or be square. Let us know what we inspired you to Tiny Tidy. And today, let me know if you need any holiday recipes of all of the allergen-free variety. Thanks for being here. See you next time on The Helpful Home. And here's the part where I tell you a little bit more about Javi. Not only is it gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free, which is very important to my family, but I also appreciate that it is ethically sourced and sustainably packaged. You cannot beat it for price or convenience, being half the cost of a K-cup and about one-tenth the cost of a coffee shop coffee. And also their commitment to regenerative agriculture and higher pay and furthering education for farmers mean you can feel just as good, not only about their product, but about their practice. Follow the link as and well. use the coupon code both in the description box below to get your own Javi for yourself and be ready for your holiday get-togethers.